طلع ورا مش مشكلة توكل على الله أنا جاهز السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته جمعة مباركة إن شاء الله عليكم أجمعين في كل مكان و sorry today is Good Friday for all of you I wish you Good Friday to all of you everywhere and anywhere and today there might be lunar eclipse tonight before Maghrib UK time please observe it if you can see it physically by your own eyes you can pray the prayer of eclipse. If not, there is no need. Let us talk today about what we talked about yesterday, which is socialization in conflict zones, which is, which is rebuilding society in conflict zones, and how can we talk about the engineering of change. This uh, title has been given to me by Mr. Ahmed Sheikh. It is his idea and his uh, effort, and he was asking me to talk about it. Uh, when we try to build society in a conflict zones, there are three stages of socialization. First is the first responder and individuals like you and me who are welcoming those people who become displaced or refugees. This is the first one stage. Second stage is socialization and creating a society. Third stage is the engineering of change. Clear in the conflict zones, first step you become the first responder and as an individual how we welcome the displaced people or the refugees. So move from there when people come and become like clusters of people living in different areas in your society. So you start actually to build their society. Then the third one to after they settle to make the engineering of change. Uh, the first responder policy the first responder policy is whatever happened to me and you and to anybody in a village, in a street, in a city, in a country, the first responder for us is the next door neighbor, is the next door neighbor. Whether we are living on a mountain, in an earthquake, uh, 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 born area or in, in a valley where there's a flooding like the Bay of Bengal or anywhere else or a fire like what we have seen in Greece uh, a few days ago and so on. The first responder is such an individual next to you, next to me, next to my house, try to before anybody else come. So that is, uh, the first responder is Depending on the desires and the preparedness of the host community. You go to a community that every and each one of them are welcoming you. Other community might not be. Okay? The desires and preparedness of the host community to receive displaced people and refugees. This is called the first responders and this happened before any other response. The first responder happened before anybody else for the local community organization and religious institution come close to you before government organization wake up and respond to the disaster before the international and government organizations such as Red Cross family and Red Cross Arism family like Oxfam, like Save the Children, like Islamic Relief, like Muslim Aid, like others or before the regional and the global governmental organization 
to respond such as United Nations, League of Arab States, uh, or Organization of Islamic Cooperation, uh, European Union, and others. So the first step or the first stage is the first responder. Okay? Clear? Do you have any query about it? Please send a comment. Last week, I was in Greece. Before that, we were in Bosnia to commemorate or to remember the victim of Srebrenica, which most of the young people now don't know even where Bosnia. Not actually needless to say what Srebrenica and what happened in Srebrenica. When we were in Greece, we visited a place or a, a uh, uh, an island called Lesbos was about a few thousand, at least maybe 10, 20,000 people were there. And we were received by a few individuals in these in this, in this islands. Why I put this photograph of our beloved brother called Dr. Smet, Abdurrahman Smet from Kuwait, who established or who founded uh, Africa Muslim uh, Committee uh, in, 19, in the late 70s. Then it became now direct aid because he was one of the people who were talking about the first responder and the people who were actually helping people in no man's land. We met first time in Leicester in December 1984. And he was telling me, he thought that when he went to Africa in the late 70s, that he discovered a lot of things and he is being there before anybody else. He went to one of the jungles. And he discovered an old European woman, woman living in the jungle with the native people in such a country to help them for 10 years. So he realized that his humanity was not the first in this area. Somebody else was ahead of him. When we landed in Lesbos, we found those people. This is Nikos. Nikos is a Greek gentleman who had a restaurant and he wanted to receive the refugees who were coming from Turkey, most of them, are from Arab countries or from Pakistan, uh, Pakistan, uh, Afghanistan, South Sudan, and others. But his government told him, you have a business license for a restaurant. If you feed people, we'll cancel the license. He said, cancel it. He canceled the license and he founded something called Home, Welcome Home, which is a, a small charity organization to feed hundreds of people every day. And in his, about nearly up to 2,000 people, about in his restaurant, there's a small area on the sea, he can let the refugees go with him to have the meal. This is another group from Britain, uh, Eric and Flippa. Eric and Flippa, he is a, he's an artist. He is an artist and he do woodwork as well as painting. And he was receiving the refugees coming from Turkey from the 2014, 15, 16, 17, 18. And he even stopped most of his business to help his wife to make a community center and to make a warehouse. The warehouse is full of clothes to give such clothes to the refugees, pampers, uh, shampoo, uh, uh, detergents, to clean up every month. And they gave up all the leisure of their life, where they were, or in UK. This is a third individual called Julio. Julio is from Spain. Is actually having a kitchen to produce another 2,000 meal every day to feed the refugees. And this is the group. This is uh, uh, Eric. This is Nicole, Nikos, and this is his wife. And these two of the refugees are helping them from Pakistan and from Afghanistan. And this is a lady come from America to uh, help them. And this is uh, Fadi from Turkey. 
he is the head of one of the uh, uh, organization looking after orphans. And this is Osama from uh, uh, Canada. Why I'm talking about those people? Those people, none of them is Muslim. Especially Eric, his wife, Nikos, his wife, and Julio. But all of them have been driven by their humanity to hold people that they have never seen before. They don't share the same faith. They might not share the same values and the same culture, but their humanity forces them even to change the career in their life at this age of their life. You see, they are not young, in the 50s, all of them are mostly in the 50s. Maybe Julio might be in the 60s. This message now to the young, the young people like, my, like yourself. When we look at the level of humanity in their hearts and what they have been doing as first responder to the people who are coming to cross the sea and to be in a different land, what are we doing? What are we doing? Do we think that humanitarian response is just a photograph? It's just a small snapshot? It's just a video? It's just a tweet? It's just whatever you call it? Image? No. It's a mission. It's a message. It's a lifetime achievement. It's a patience. And it's a change of career. And this is what Eric and his wife, Nicole, Nicholas and his wife, and Julie have been doing for the last few years. And suffering from short income and change of the career. This is the first stage in building social uh, fabric of the, uh, of, the, of the refugees in where, wherever they are. Second stage is socialization. What socialization means? It could be like a seed that you want to plant to grow a tree, or it could be like an idea that you want to protect to change it from an idea into ideology, into culture, into renaissance, into civilization, into values, into everything. It's either. It is like a plantation in the community to build these fortresses to protect the community internally and externally. This is one definition. Second definition by Ahmed Sheikh is socialization in the conflict zone is to change the biological citizen who is only his or her interest is to look after themselves biologically. Food, drink, leisure, and detach themselves from the, from the outside society. But the biological citizen is such an individual who is a consumer, not a productive. So this process has changed biological citizen into social citizen. From consuming citizen into proactive, productive, impacting the society, taking initiatives, and becoming community leaders. That's why we need to have this social change even amongst displaced people and amongst, actually, the refugees. What do we require to do this? Three things. First of all, a good seed or suitable idea. If we go to a cluster of displaced people or a cluster of refugees and want to change into a society or a community, we have to approach them according to what they understand. If we want to bring a great idea from the east or the west, if it does not suit our culture, it will not grow. It will not be understood. To not become a tree, or not become ideology, to not become culture, to not become values. So we have to create our idea from within what we understand in our society. And displacement, or we are in the refugees camps. This is number one. Number two, we have to find the fertile soil to plant the seed, or to nurture the idea. It's not on any soil. You have to find where to, whom to talk to, whom to address, and whom to explain your idea. 
Okay? This is number two. Number three is the surrounding climate, which is the political climate, the social climate, the economical climate, the value climate, the cultural climate. Political climate, it depends on the uh, uh, liberty space you have in your society. The less liberty you have, the less liberty space you have, the more difficult to grow your idea and change it in ideology and change it into culture and change it into values and change it into renaissance and civilization. The more liberty space you have in your society, the more ideas will come out to become initiatives, to become values, to become culture, to become many, many things. And to explore the potential of each and every one of us. So in these countries who run by uh, security, run by military, run by intelligence, you will never be able to do that. Economically as well, social as well. So you have to find the surrounding culture which enable your idea, enable your seed to grow and to become a habitat. Your idea becomes civilization. What is the process to make this socialization in a conflict zone? First of all is the family structure. First, first, first is the family structure. A husband and a wife, a male and female, children, extended family. The family of the community that we knew. This is the first step of nurturing the children of how to become a social entity and having humanity in his or her heart. Number two, the freedom and liberal space, as I mentioned before. The more iron fist and security state your country is suffering from, the less you'll be able to build social fabric inside your country. No matter what. If you want to receive and to explore and to expand the potential of every one of them, widen the horizon of the liberty space in your country. Faith and patriotism. How can we make each one of us patriotic to his or her, or her own country if we give no liberty space to them? If we don't give them the freedom to speech, if we shut them up, if we frighten them, no way they will be patriotic. No way. And such country will suffer from a deep, deep, deep states within the state. So patriotism is not something as a lecture or a photograph or an image or just a project. Patriotism is being built in the heart of the young people from the time of birth to death, depending on the mother and the father at home, the school, the family, the surrounding, the freedom space, and the liberty, and so on, so on, so on. The values, morality, manners, and community values it has to be there, nurtured in the heart of the young people. From the date of the childhood, from birth. Education. Education, education, education. Not only to be educated to get a certificate, but it's to education to understand. Education to comprehend. Education to analyze. Education to produce. Education to direct others. Not just to be educated, to say that I got PhD or master or whatever it is so I can get a job. This is not education. This is licensing. 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 Not education. Education is where you'll be able to, through your education, to change the community to a positive, more positive way. Awareness. You have to be aware of your surrounding, of your community of the wealth of your country, of the history of your country, of the culture of your country, of the neighborhood, 
of the friends, of the enemies, of the past, of the history, of the future. All this, not to become a biological or sofa citizen. Sofa citizen in the Middle East, biological in the West. Not the culture and the history, of course. Every government, every victorious government, Rewrite the history according to what they want. And it's wrong. History should be taught to the children from generation to generation to generation to understand the proper history of their country. Human resources. Yes, you have to utilize the human resources. The most important asset in any country. They are more valuable than oil, than gas, than tourism, than agriculture. Because without such an able human being, you don't have a country, you don't have a society, you don't have an economy. You don't have a defense mechanism to the country. Then the independence of the independence of the individuals. When the individual citizen in such a society have a good income, he or she will be able to think positively to change the society, to build the society, to protect the society. But if we keep such individual citizens, chase their tail ends for breadwinning so they can do two, three, four jobs every day, they, they will never be able to become productive. And this is happening in different countries in the East. Encourage each one of the people, the citizen or the individual to take initiatives, even if they fail once or twice or three times. The, 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 number, of, the number 10 at the bell, building civil society organization. So the mechanisms of building the socialization in conflict zones start from the family structure, freedom, liberty, space, faith and patriotism, morality, manners, community values, education, awareness, culture and history, patience, utilizing human resources, individual economic inter uh, independence, uh, uh, independence, not in, uh, inter interdependence, uh, creating initiatives and building society. This, yeah, this is in either in, in, in a conflict zone or actually in, 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 a, in, a, in a stable society. The third step or the third stage is engineering of social change. How can we do this? And can, let us look and make, make some definition. The engineering is a process of creating different paths. No, the engineers, they always believe in straight lines, straight paths. Okay? This could be the path, this could be horizontal, vertical, circular, diagonal, oblong, cross-cutting, oblique, circumferential, and so on and so on. Engineering also is a process of changing fruit into a community project and programs and product. The farmer can produce the fruit, but you need to have out of this fruit different projects and different program and different product to the society. We use engineering process to build what? We are using this engineering to build or to rebuild societies suffering from devastation, ruins, destruction, citizen displacement, psychological trauma, tick disorder, and others. So this is what we use, the engineering, to build such a society. As, as uh, Ahmad was putting a lot of diseases affecting such societies, I did not want to touch it because it would be too long for you. Such diseases could be psychological, could be mental, could be uh, a, a irregular behavior, could be crime, could be uh, different crimes, could be uh, displacement, could be uh, lack of trust, uh, could, be, uh, could be lack of trust could be, uh, and so on, so on, so But I'm focusing on actually how to build. What is the objective of the engineering? Number one is to identify the root problem, a negative social phenomena. Then drawing a strategic recommendation for problem solution. Number two, having a comprehensive, inclusive, general approach. Yani, to be inclusive, comprehensive, then after we have this inclusive approach, we will be able to divide into different paths where specialized people can come and discuss in details different specialty, like economics, like agriculture, like water, like sanitation, like politics, like defense, like security, 
like arts, like others. Okay? Guided by properly planned strategic plans, not firefighting emotional response. Linking planning to development. Then you plan to develop. Okay? Direction to strategy. Programs to objectives. If our planning, our direction, our programs, linking into development, strategies, and of a objective, program objectives. Using the values and different ideological ideas, different ideologies to maintain and develop strong social fabric. Rebuilding citizens' characters to try to psychologically rebuild the citizen characters and improving the social behavior. Changing individual and organization social behavior from being reactive into being logical. My boss has a dream and they want you to do this tomorrow. No way. Work according to a plan. Work according to uh, a strategy. Improving the social relationship between individuals. When you have this conducive society, when you can include everybody, inclusive society, Minimizing the risks and the confrontation with others. Because whenever you build a society, whether they are in a conflict zone or outside conflict zones, be sure that in this area you have deep states within the society and within the surrounding as well. So don't abort your effort and waste it by confronting everybody. Slowly, progressively develop your ideas. What's our message today with this? Actually, we talked about the first responder, socialization, and the engineering of change. What's our message for the youth? Our message for the youth will say, go back to the first, to the first, uh, uh, this is those people. Why did they live the luxury life they have in Greece? or in, in Britain, or in Spain, and they are doing this voluntary work 24 hours a day. What our youth are doing? Following the football league in UK, football league in Italy, in Spain, football league in the Middle East, World Cup, playing on social media, thinking they'll make a change and make a revolution just by, by, by hashtag or by uh, the number of likes or by the number of comments that they are receiving. They are living in a balloon or a bubble. They cannot make the social change. Those people at their age, which is here Eric and his wife, here Nikos, here, join you. Those people can make the change. I want each and every one of us as young men and women to be able to make the change, to be able to make the socialization, to be able to be the first responder. First responder who has a mission, who has a vision, who has a message, and who can stay with the people to learn, to teach, to educate, to respond to the needs of the people and to build the community and society. Humanitarian work is not just a photograph or a video film or a hashtag or how many number of likes on the Instagram. No, no, no. It is as those people are saying. Not only those people, actually, but if you go back to the first one, See, the family, happy, happy. Everybody's happy to help. They're not looking for material gain. This is a camp in Greece, in, in Lesbos. This, this is uh, the people. And this is the first one which I'm talking about, Abdurrahman Smith. Late Abdurrahman Smith. 40 years ago, more than 40 years ago, he started. Be like those people. Those people will start like Abdurrahman Smith and others. There was no technology. Hands-on, traveling, walking, 
driving, flying, taking ships, taking boats, being, in, being bitten by, by mosquitoes, by snakes, by scorpions. But they had their mission and after 41 years we are still here seeing the fruit of the seed that he planted 40 years ago. Those people, to you young men and women, okay, they are not Muslims, but they have humanity in their hearts, stronger than the humanity in our hearts. This is what has been said to me by Fadi. He told me I was shocked to see the level, the magnitude of the value of humanity in the hearts of those old people who lived their life in UK, in Greece, and in Spain. And they're having to live this difficult life to serve people that they have no relationship with a theological relationship, blood relationship, country relationship, or family relationship. The message to you or to us youth, wake up. Wake up before it becomes too late to be mentioned in the history. You will never be mentioned in the history if you don't stand for the history and change its path from evil to goodness, from destruction to construction, from killing to saving, from agony to hope. This is our role as young men and women. That's why if we cannot do it, we have to think twice and three times, four times, five times. You do it. Otherwise, we have a Lord, subhanahu wa ta'ala, who will ask each and every one of us about our resources, about health, our wealth, about fitness, about life. What have we been doing? Oh, watching the World Cup. Oh, watching this. Oh, 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 oh. Waste of time. Well, I trust all of you, and I believe in all of you, and I believe that we'll do, we, you will do it better than than Dr. Abdurrahman Sumit, than Nikos, than Eric and Fleba, than Julia, and than all of us. All the best. For you, inshallah, I trust and believe in each and every one of you and you will make the change because you are the change maker and you are the challenger and you are the people who are going to build society and fight wars and else and build peace. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa